Greetings and welcome to this lecture in which I will be discussing the general principles pertaining to biosafety levels and risk groups as described in the World Health Organization Laboratory Biosafety Manual. The WHO Laboratory Biosafety Manual categorizes biological agents into four distinct risk groups based on their ability to cause harm to healthy human adults and their capacity to be transmitted into the community. Biological agents belonging to risk group 1 pose a low risk to the individual and a low risk of transmission to the community. They may cause mild symptoms, however, this does not lead to morbidity or mortality. Biological agents categorized as risk group 2 pose a significant threat to the individual. However, this is moderate and the treatment is generally available. The risk of transmission to the community is low. Biological agents categorized as risk group 3 may cause severe infections in an individual leading to mortality or morbidity. However, therapies are available and the risk of transmission to the community is low. Pathogens categorized as risk group 4 pose a high threat to the individual as well as to the community. In this case, therapeutic measures such as vaccines and other therapies may not be available, which may lead to mass morbidity and mortality. The WHO Laboratory Biosafety Manual specifies biosafety levels and this biosafety level must be considered when designing and developing your own respective containment facilities as well as the laboratory biosafety manuals which accompany th these facilities. In order to understand the concept of the containment facility, one needs to look at what is termed as directional airflow. A contained facility comprises a physical space and within this physical space, the air pressure is maintained at negative with reference to the external environment. This ensures that air flows into the facility and when it exits this facility, it flows out through a HEPA filter. The personnel in this facility are protected by the flow of air. However, they must apply suitable measures such as the donning of personal protective equipment in order to ensure that the risk of exposure to the biological agent is minimized. In a general containment facility, the air is directed into the facility via HEPA filters and enters into the facility as filtered air. It then flows through the facility over the biological agent and is filtered prior to release into the environment. This ensures that the criteria for secondary containment are met and that the community is not exposed to any escaped biological agent from this particular facility. The general layout for a biosafety level 2 facility is depicted in this particular diagram. This image has been derived from the World Health Organization Laboratory Biosafety Manual, 3rd edition. The facility contains appropriate instrumentation. This is an autoclave which is located at the entrance to this facility. The door has appropriate signages and may be equipped with a secure keypad facility or a fingerprint identification facility in order to address the risk posed by biosecurity. 
The next aspect of this lab is the location of the biological safety cabinet, which is over here, and the fume hood. Both of these are located at the end of the facility. This is the far end. Now this ensures that all the air entering this facility flows over the floor and the personnel prior to exiting in from this facility via the HEPA filters. Both of these cabinets have to be hard ducted into the building and incorporated into the building design. There is other equipment in this facility such as the receptacles for the disposal of waste, chemical, biological, radiological as the signage indicates as well as appropriate workbenches for conducting laboratory operations. So this is the autoclave, the biological safety cabinet and the film food and their respective placement in the laboratory workspace. A biosafety level 3 laboratory or BSL3 has additional components which one must incorporate into the design. The first aspect is the door. So this door is equipped with the requisite signage as in a BSL-2. However, there is additional security precaution in the form of a keypad or an identification device. Adjacent to this primary entry point of this door is the vestibule. This vestibule serves as an airlock which permits equalization of pressure when an operator enters into this facility. One can note that there is directional airflow as described in the slide on directional airflow and this facility is maintained at negative pressure with reference to the external environment. Note that the location of the biological safety cabinets as well as the fume hood is at the far end of the facility and the autoclave has been shifted into the facility itself. All of this equipment is hard ducted into the system and the exhaust vents out into the external environment via HEPA filters. The personnel working in a BSL-3 must don the requisite personal protective equipment which accords respiratory protection as well as other protection as the case may be. This is determined by the risk assessment of that particular biological agent. The rest of the equipment is similar to a BSL-2. We can see the location of the receptacles as well as the storage cabinets and other accessory equipment in the facility. That's the BSC, the fume hood and the autoclave and the double door with the secure entry and exit and the directional airflow. These are the components which are required in order for a laboratory to be categorized as a BSL-3 facility. One of the questions which has been posed by many of the bio-risk managers and biosafety officers is do I need to work in a BSL-3 facility when my pathogen has been categorized as risk group 3? And the answer is it depends on your administrative controls. You can work with a risk group 3 pathogen in a biosafety level 2 laboratory. However, you must implement the appropriate administrative controls in terms of standard operating procedures. Please note that this must be done on a case-by-case -case basis after a thorough risk assessment. I hope this lecture has clarified some of the points regarding the risk groups and the facilities. Thank you very much for watching and stay biosafe.